started, so I just want to say welcome to everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I hope um, everybody's doing well and staying cool. We were just talking about the heat and the humidity. Um, this is Design Watch. This is our weekly webinar. We try to bring you topics that are of most value to you and your business. Welcome to our Tuesday edition. I am Sandy Cabellas, current president of the ASAB New Jersey chapter. Um, you know, we try to bring, I mentioned we try to bring you topics that um, are of most value to you. We often um, will poll our membership and we will try to understand what topics, um, you know, everyone's asking for. And, and you know, business and efficiency, um, those always come to the top of the list. So we are very excited to have with us today, Lindsay Paoli and Casey Helmick from Design Manager. Um, some people may be familiar with the Design Manager software. Um, and if you are and you're looking for more information today, I believe you're in the right place. And if you're not so familiar, I think you're also in the right place because um, I think these two young ladies are going to take us through um, a lot of good information about the system. So at this point, I would like to turn it over to Lindsay. Thank you so much. And if you can give us a little bit of background before about yourself, which I found to be kind of interesting. And then uh, if you can jump into the presentation. So welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you to Terry for connecting us and creating this opportunity for us. So very appreciative, um, you know, to be here today and connect with all of you. Uh, Terry's been with us for several years. She's upgraded from our DM product to our pro product. So that's a neat experience, um, which I'm sure she could talk more about. But yeah, thank you very much. Um, my name again is Lindsay Paoli. I'm the director of sales and marketing at Design Manager. Um, I've been a design manager for 13 years now. I came on board as a sales coordinator and I started um, driving different sales initiatives and processes and testing out some different hypotheses, but all really to grow the company and be able to reach more designers. Um, it kind of snowballed from there. I got involved in associations like ASID. Eventually I got involved more with High Point. Um, and I actually have a presentation next week with IFDA on uh, five tips on running your business post COVID-19. So um, I just, I really saw a lot of opportunity with our small company from day one that I wanted to get more and more involved. And I eventually became a part owner of the company and I grew the revenue of the business. Uh, 400%, we doubled the size of our team, and eventually we ended up becoming part of an even bigger company last year uh, called firstdibs.com. So that was really exciting. Um, we'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, and then I have Casey with me here today who recently graduated from West Virginia University with her degree in interior design. And she has been with us since December. And um, she has become really skilled at the product very quickly. And she really enjoys helping designers learn how to get the most value out of Design Manager. So today we're going to, um, here's a little agenda, but we're really excited to share with you a little bit about our company, what our software can do, specifically talk about how to manage your projects virtually during the current economic landscape, and then see our software in action. So who is Design Manager? Design Manager is the leading project management and accounting software for interior designers. Uh, we've been around for a really long time, 1984. We started as a local company. We grew into a nationwide software company, and we were one of the first providers of cloud-based design software. Um, our mission statement is giving designers the best tools and services in the world, uh, really because design firms have specific needs that can't be answered by conventional or generic software. So it's our mission to provide a product that is dedicated to serving the design industry. Um, and as you can see, our timeline dates way back um, to 1984. And that is actually before the first Windows operating system came out. Um, so we actually had an MS-DOS version, if anybody is familiar with that. Um, but what that really tells us is that Design Manager has a lot of experience with designers and a lot of experience in the design industry. And all we've done through the years is just learn and learn and learn from our interior designers and get better over time. Um, so mid-90s, we really um, launched our flagship product, which is Pro. 
And then in 2005, um, Joe Kissel and Brad Martin took over from the previous leadership team. And their vision really was to take the software to the cloud. Um, so we did that in about 2007. That's about when I came on board. And then I spent the next four years about uh, explaining what the cloud was to interior designers and why it was safer than the desktop software. And it was actually a really fun challenge for me. And nowadays we don't even think twice about cloud software. It's just the way everything is. But back then it was still very new um, to all industries. And uh, that was a really, really fun experience. So fast forward a bit. Um, we, we had a lot of releases in between, but we brought on some programming staff around 2017, 2018. So then 2018 was actually a really big year for us for our software. Um, so we actually were able to release an API, a product clipper, a whiteboard, and an iOS app as well. Um, and then towards the, that was in the very, very beginning, almost end of 2018. Then at the, um, towards the end of 2019, we actually were able to join First Dibs. And we really wanted to join a bigger company with more resources, more opportunity, and just to give us a chance to reach a broader audience. So what is Design Manager? Design Manager is a centralized workspace where users manage design projects from start to finish. That's a really good one sentence blurb about what the software is. If you break out the features, you can break them out into project management, purchasing and time billing, accounting, and industry specific reports. If you think about a design project, that flows with the design project. So you're thinking about items and components as you begin, you're thinking about your professional documents that you're sending to clients and vendors, and then you're starting to track your orders and track your time. Um, and then comes in the accounting. But really, the accounting is already happening as those things um, are being entered by designers, design assistants into the software. So it's really not that there's just the accounting kind of takes over, it's actually happening the whole time, which is one of the key benefits to Design Manager is that you really don't have to do anything, you really just have to go through the process, put your items in, create your documents, and the accounting is kind of happening in the background. Of course, there's um, non-project related expenses that you want to enter as well, the rent, things like that, um, which Design Manager can do all of that. The best part about Design Manager though is actually the industry specific reports. So how we were able to learn through all these 30 plus years that we've been in the business and how we deliver that experience to you, a lot of that comes through in our reporting. So you're gonna get very industry specific reports like a pick list, an ff &E, a project schedule, deposit analysis, a project profit and loss. So it's not just a company, overall company profit and loss, it's actually a project profit and loss. So everything is broken down into projects within Design Manager, which you can actually see in our upcoming demonstration that Casey will show. So why do designers choose Design Manager? Um, there's a lot of different reasons. I'll only touch on a couple um, here today, but the first one to talk about is the integrated solution, which is what I've been harping on so far is that with project management and accounting in the same software package, designers can really see the whole picture of their business. This is really crucial for making really good business decisions. Um, the other one is scalability, which could be called growth. Um, and a really good example of that is actually um, somebody that we did a blog post with just this week. And they are a really nice company down in Greensboro, North Carolina called Marta Mitchell Interior Design. And Marta Mitchell, after the 2008 recession, started her company as just a one person solo opinion, um and she grew that company to about 15 employees today and they manage about 50 projects on an ongoing basis um, and she did that using design manager software so we usually tell people that you know we are a software package that can grow with your design firm and then the last one that i'll touch on here i actually have a quick video to show um, of tom felicia who's a user of the software let's see if i can play that to be able to do uh, the things that I do as a creative professional, to be able to have
difficult for us to have all of these things happening at once. So that's just a little snippet um, from Tom. We actually filmed that down in High Point about a year ago, um, and it was super fun to be around him, be around his team. But really what he was saying is that with Design Manager, he has a peace of mind as a business owner, as a CEO of his you know larger company, that everything is happening around him flawlessly, and he doesn't have to worry about it. So let's dig in a little bit deeper um, before we get to the demo of the software and just talk about a few things on how Design Manager can solve some of the virtual working challenges that might be presented during this time. So with cloud computing, almost all team coordination challenges are solved because anyone in the company can see updated information about any client, about any project or item at any time. However, there's some specific virtual working challenges that have come out of the COVID-19 world that Design Manager can solve for your business as a whole. So let's take a look at five of these challenges and see how DM can help with those. The first one that we look at here is working remotely with many different software programs. So that could be a challenge when you're trying to go from, you know, maybe 0% working from home to 100% of the team working from home. Um, you know, again, design manager being the project management and accounting piece, what we're really saying is that besides Zoom, besides your AutoCAD and SketchUp, and besides maybe your Google Docs and Microsoft Office, really all you should need as a design firm is design manager because we should have all the other pieces for you. Um, a lot of these challenges actually came about organically from surveying our designers and one of the things that they said in the beginning of um, the quarantine was that, you know, user permission management was difficult for them using all the different online software that they were using. But with Design Manager, it's very easy to onboard new users and we have really advanced settings that make it very, very easy to um, set up your design assistant with only seeing what they need to see in the software at, at any given time. Or if you have a bookkeeper that needs to see all of the information, that's very easy to set up as well. So um, the next one will be staying connected to your team. Having design manager as your home base, as your centralized workspace is really important for keeping everybody up to date on, you know, did that get shipped, did, get, did that get delivered? who paid for that, what check number did it come in on, or did they pay by credit card, did they pay by ACH? Those types of things are all solved by just a few clicks within DM. Um, staying efficient. This is an interesting one um, that came about from this specific time period. Um, we could have had, so the design firm could have had some layoffs, so they have less manpower. We could be challenged with working from home with small kids, you know, high school kids, whatever age kids, that's presenting a problem to, you know, a cohesive work environment, things like that. But staying efficient in design manager because you are using DM's tried and true um, tested workflows, you're going to save time and you're going to keep on task. Um, it's a really great way to reduce errors and, and stay focused. Um, and the last one is honestly just the cash flow with the ever changing economic climate. Um, nothing is more important to a business right now than cash flow and cash positions. And with Design Manager, it's really easy to have those financial statements that you need at your fingertips. And that just gives a lot of confidence to the business owner that they can weather something like this pandemic that we're in currently. Um, the absolute best way though to manage your design projects is by seeing Design Manager in action and watching the items as they move through the design process. So at this time, I will pass it over to Casey to take us on through a quick tour of Design Manager. All right, thank you, Lindsay. I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Okay. All right, so hello everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, as mentioned, my name is Casey. I'm a client service specialist here at Design Manager, and I'm excited to share the software with you today. So let's get started. So as Lindsay mentioned, Design Manager's Pro Cloud is designed specifically for interior designers. Um, the company itself has been leading our industry since 1984, meaning we've taken feedback from clients since then 
and have crafted the software to support the design process workflow. Design Manager can be broken down into two main sections. The first being project management, that's everything from specifying items and components, with markups, discounts, and fees, creating branded documents and streamlining your time billing, to purchasing and order tracking. <clears throat> and then the second being accounting. So our robust system holds a single place for collecting payments, tracking expenses, viewing reports from industry specific to commonly used financial statements. So when getting started in Design Manager, it's important to keep in mind the natural hierarchy within the software. So that's starting with clients and projects, then items and components. We'll walk through each of these to gain a better understanding. Let's begin with clients. So when starting a project, you first want to enter client information. The glossaries are a great contact management tool. So we'll go ahead and take a look at a client. We'll select Casey Hill. And you'll see there's a variety of optional information to input. You choose to add whatever information is important to you and your company, and you can even import an existing client list into Design Manager. So starting at the top here, you'll see a space to input the client's address, as well as any contact information you would like to track. And then you'll see the code that is created for this client. So this is referenced throughout the software to link everything back to that client. So a single client can have one project or multiple, making it easy to keep track of whatever the size of scope of work may be. All right, so this brings us to projects. And this window is where we enter our actual projects that we'll be working on. It's a very straightforward linear format as you'll see with a lot of windows in Design Manager. So we'll take a look at an existing project. We'll stick with Mrs. Hill's Timeless Townhouse. And we'll select to edit to get a quick view of what all is available within this project window. So this brings us to the info tab. And you'll see all the contact information is pre-populated upon entering that client code as we just discussed. And you'll also see a set project code is created. And this ties everything back to that project, very similar to the client code. And then you'll see a multitude of addresses, including the billing, your shipping address, as well as your site address. So further over on the defaults tab, you'll find the project defaults, such as the PO sidemark, the PO designer extension, the client deposit, invoice terms if you have any, as well as our time billing tier, which ties back to our sophisticated time billing feature that keeps track of all costs and rates. And that's just the very beginning of how detailed we can get. So if we look a bit further on the advanced tab here, we can see all the configurations that can be set on a per project basis. So keep in mind that all of these settings can be configured at a company level. So once you have your company template set, those defaults will, will come down to projects, all the way down to individual items, all the way down to individual components. So these automatic calculations save, save you time and eliminate room for error. However, you always have total control and you can customize each project and item settings at any time. Heading back to that project window, you'll see we have an allotted space for notes, for any internal communication, as well as our budgeting system. So you can budget a project as a whole, as you see here. You can also budget per sales category or location. So that's a quick look at our clients and projects as a whole. There's a lot of contact information and tons of customizable defaults. So this brings us to specifications. And the specs in Design Manager, similar to in real life, are really the core of the program. The project spec button here brings us to the spec window. So to view, edit, or add an item, we'll first select the project it's associated with. We're sticking with that timeless townhouse. And now we'll very quickly and easily see a spreadsheet-like list of all the active items in this project. So this view shows us all the basic information in one glance, so we can see the location, the reference number, which is unique to this project. And you'll notice that this number starts with 0001, meaning you can have up to 9,999 items per project with 999 components per item. So this really sets us apart from other applications. Um, some can't account for this many items in their entire program, whereas we can account for this in a single project. So further over, we have a allotted spot for your spec number, plan number, a thumbnail image of the item, as well as the description. And then you'll find our status codes. So Design Manager's automatic status codes are an awesome feature that uses flags and triggers to keep track of milestones within the project. The software comes pre-configured with these status codes and they mirror how an item or service moves through the design process. 
So if certain events occur, Design Manager automatically updates the status of an item to show you how it's progressing. So for example, say you set out a proposal, um, the status would change to awaiting client approval. And once you receive that requested deposit, this would automatically change to need to order. And that's all done automatically, no manual um, labor is needed there. And further, these codes are fully customizable, so they can be crafted to fit your company's workflow and track events that you want to follow throughout the life cycle of a product. So continuing across this window, we have any documents that this item might have been listed on, tasks and reminders, as well as the vendor. So this is also where we add and edit specifications. Let's take a look at an existing item um, just to see what all we have. We'll select this Luca Pello cover here. And this is where you'll find a home for any information. Um, we have an allotted space for the name and description, the location, as well as the sales category, which ties back to our revenue or cost of goods sold account. And then circling back to that hierarchy concept, so these items are client facing, whereas the components listed below are vendor facing. So let's take a look at a uh, component here. We'll select, you'll see that this pillow cover has an insert as a component, so we'll select that. And selecting the vendor within the component will pull over any defaults from your vendor glossary. And we could even go as far as adding freight, a design fee, or additional charges to the actual component. All right. So we have multiple ways of actually adding specs into a project. The first being manually by clicking the add in the lower left corner here. This is a very straightforward method. However, we have a few more options that are even quicker. First, we have our inventory button. So this allows you to pull product directly from your stock into a project. And the system accounts for that change in inventory and it pre-populates all the details about that item. And then second, we have our catalog button. So if you have goods or merchandise that you find yourself using repeatedly in projects, you can store them in your catalog by using the store button down here. And then you can pull them into a project by using this catalog button. So crafting your company's catalog, again, it saves you um, time and effort from re-entering any information. And then third, you can simply copy and paste any item to any project or location using our tree view tab here. You'll see the copy and paste buttons at the bottom of the window. And then finally, we have our product clipper. So this is my favorite way of adding specs and I know a lot of our clients really love it too. ProCloud's product clipper is a Chrome browser plugin and it streamlines the user experience even further. The clipper allows you to add any product directly from the vendor's website to Design Manager's whiteboard in a few clicks. So let's see how this works. We'll head to a vendor page. I chose first dibs, of course, and we'll pull up a product page. So I'll go to furniture, iconic designs, and let's do the pop-up bear chair. Now we'll go ahead and select one. So I'm going to choose this chair here. And now we'll access our product clipper simply by clicking the extension in our Chrome. So you can see it setting right up here. Let's see, give that a click. And you'll see it pulls up for us. So when getting started, you'll use your DM credentials for a one-time login, and then the clipper and the software will be integrated together. All right, so let me select that chair. Clipper. Doesn't want to open for me. <laughs> Give me one sec. Oh, there it is. Okay. So you notice when hovering over a product, you'll see the DM logo appear. By clicking that, that'll pull that image directly into the product clipper. Um, we can then bring any information into the corresponding fields. So you'll see the text box in question becomes activated with a blue um, outline. And then you just click on the text you'd like and that pulls that directly over. So we'll go ahead and put in the item name there. We'll also add the item description. We'll pop in the vendor, which ties back to your vendor glossary list in Design Manager. A little further down, we'll do the SKU number, quantity as one. The unit of measure also ties back into your list within the software. 
and then we can add our cost as well as shipping cost if we'd like. You can add any other information you would like, such as project location. We'll go ahead and click save. You'll see that green check mark, meaning it has been sent to the software. And then we'll hop back into the software and we'll pull up our whiteboard. So right over here. So the ProCloud whiteboard gives you the ability to review any items that you've captured. Just like that, we'll see our, our chair sitting on the cart on the whiteboard. And from here, we have a lot of options. So if we click this button here, we can see we can create an item, create as a component, add it to our inventory or catalog, and even transfer it to another user. They'd, we'd like them to take a look at our item. So for now, we'll choose to edit and we'll go ahead and pop in a project name. And as mentioned, we could have done this within the clipper, but we'll go ahead and add it here. Put this in our living room. And then we'll add a sales category. This would be furniture. And you'll see our description and cost is all pulled over from that clipper. We'll select OK. And then we'll go ahead and choose to create an item. OK, again. And you'll see the chair was taken off our whiteboard. We'll select yes, we'd like to view it. And just like that, we have our specification within our project, or within our project project. So the product clipper makes it super quick and easy to pull specs over to the whiteboard and then allows you to share and create whenever you're ready. So the specifying process itself seems to be the most time consuming work for designers. So getting this information into the software should be as easy as possible. That's really what we're going for um, with the product clipper. So regardless of your method of entry, once the specification work is done, there's no need to enter this information in other areas. There's no need for spreadsheets or other applications to create documents. Once it's entered, we can access it throughout the software to create proposals, purchase orders, and invoices. So let's see how to do that. Close out of some windows and we'll go ahead and jump over to this proposal button. And we can craft or view any proposal documents by entering the project name. And now we'll see a list of various documents that I've created so far for the Timeless Townhouse project. And although this window is title proposals, you'll see that we can create much more than that. So at first we'll get a quick view of uh, the information on this window, including the document number, the date the document was created, the name or phase, as well as a snapshot of the status of that item, the style, which we'll get into, and then some accounting information, such as the total proposed, um, what was requested and what has been received thus far. So let's explore one of these documents so we can see all of our formatting options. To do so, I'm going to create or add a document. And on the new proposal window, we'll see uh, the name or phase has defaulted down. I'm going to go ahead and make this something more specific and I will call this to pop up their chair. And then we have our date as well as the styles. So we can take a look at the styles here. You'll see it's uh, defaulting to the modern format, which I configured in our company settings. This is the style I prefer as it's the most contemporary feel. But if you use the drop down here, you'll see we have a residential suite as well as a commercial suite and then all of our modern formats. And then finally, we have two versions of our specs, classic and modern, and then two bid specs, and finally our tear sheets. So let's do a modern proposal here. And we will go ahead and tag our chair that we just pulled over. So to create any document, to add any item to any document, you just tag it on the left here. You select OK. And you'll see that the document opens in your default web browser as a PDF file type. And from here you can view, you can select to download it to any location and print from here as well. So you'll see we have the site address, uh, where it's shipping to, um, quantity, unit of measure, the total price. And then at the bottom, we'll see our sales tax listed out. Let's see here, if we get down here, as well as the deposit requested. And then at the very bottom, you'll see the signature and date line. So let's jump back to design manager. And you'll see our document is right at the top with all of its supporting information. So from here, we can simply tag documents and select send to send them directly to our clients through the software. So let's fast forward in the design process a bit 
process a bit and imagine we sent our proposal to the client. They love their chair. They send over the 50% deposit requested and now we're ready to get into purchasing. So we'll find this button beside proposals here. And just like we saw with our proposals, we don't need to enter any more information. Uh, once we have those goods and services entered into our specs, we can go right into making the purchase orders. This window should look familiar, very similar to the uh, proposal window. You type in your project to start and we'll put that in. Now we're seeing all the orders that I've created for vendors in the past. So if we want to create a new order, we'll go ahead and click add PO. And there's our chair that we just proposed waiting to, to be purchased. And in this case, I may have already placed a physical order through First Dibs website, but I want to use the purchase order concept to track the order itself, as well as the accounting associated with the purchase order. So this feature is kind of a link between orders and tracking. So you don't need to do one order at a time. I could in theory select or tag every item here and design manager would break out the components with the same vendors and ship two combinations into separate POs for us. So we could create hundreds of POs in just one click. So we'll go ahead and select OK to view our PO. This will open directly in the software. And you'll see the vendor where it's shipping to, the description, side mark, as well as any costs. And then at the top here, you'll see the uh, preferred shipping method, the account number if you'd like, as well as any terms. We'll go ahead and exit and accept this PO. And just like that, our PO is recorded. So finally, jumping down a bit further in the design process, we placed our and tracked our order. We've received our chair as well as some vendor bills, which we've recorded through the accounting tab. And now it's time to invoice our client. So as usual, we'll select to add. And we'll start typing our project name. And we then see all the items that have not yet been invoiced to the client. So let's find our chair here. And once again, I could select everything here. And I can even select items per proposal number. So I'm going to go ahead and stick to that modern format. I'll select OK. And from here, we can choose to journal, preview, or post our invoice. So I'll select post so I can preview. Again, sticking to that modern format. And then that's going to open in our default web browser again. So here we are, we have pretty much the same information as you saw on the proposal with some additional accounting information. Um, if there was a deposit already collected, that would show here. And then we have our balance due. So within moments, you can grab any number of specifications from any vendor using the product clipper, vet them on the whiteboard, commit them to the project, and then you're ready to go. We can create any number of documents, tear sheets, proposals, POs, invoices, etc. So with that, that is the very tip of the iceberg as to what Design Manager can do for you and your company and to provide professional to professional designers. So now we will jump back to Lindsay to talk about some of the great features of our Design Manager mobile app. So let's jump, stop All sharing. All right. Thank you, Casey. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Um, it's just a quick view. There's tons of features in the software. It's a big software. It has lots of industry specific features, obviously. Um, but that was like a very good taking a product all the way through um, the process. So um, next, I'd like to jump into our Design Manager mobile app that we have. Um, and this came out in the very beginning of 2019. And it was a really good use to do very basic things within Design Manager. So as you can see, the software can do all of these robust things, but this app is made to do four main things. Um, it is a gallery to swipe through while you're in person with your clients. It's the ability to add items in person. So if you are shopping through a design center, if you are at market or you're at an auction, you can take a picture, put in a description, put in a name of the item, put the cost in, um, all the information about a regular item you can get on the fly. Then it's used for time tracking. And then lastly, for contact management. So four really important main functions that interior designers need to do on the go. 
So let's look at each one of those just really briefly. Um, the client presentations, this is something really good for in-person meetings, obviously maybe not happening right now, but um, it's a great way to easily show clients what you're thinking about for the project, um, not show them any pricing, of course, uh, or sorry, only show them pricing, not show them cost. It's a really important concept in Design Manager. Um, the cost is what the designer pays, the price is what your end client is gonna pay. So obviously no costs are going to be shown to um, your client. And then a really large picture um, to really demonstrate what the product is looking like. Then we have the capturing of items. So you can add items to projects, you can add new projects, um, exist, you can add it to existing projects, um, you can save it for later. All of these items will just appear on that whiteboard that Casey just demonstrated. So you can decide what to do with them later um, and obviously take a photo while you're out too. Um, time tracking is key in, in design and even more so now. Um, you know, as product uh, margins are shrinking on products, you know, time tracking is becoming more and more important for interior designers and billing those out to your client is very important. So this gives you the ability to be, again, on the go with a start stop timer. We also have a start stop timer within the software to track your time uh, if you're on Zoom meetings or anything at all. But um, this, you can easily choose an activity, which is a predefined activity within the software. It all pulls up on a drop down um, really easily and then um, creates a time billing entry so that you can bill it out to your client. And lastly, the contact management. So you can view your contacts, you can get out to get directions to your contacts on the go very easily. You can add new contacts and you can actually see a little deep dive into projects and proposals through that as well. So this is, this app is something that complements our full software really well, and it gives you a really easy way to um, have a sync with your Apple device and comes into that whiteboard like we showed earlier. Um, we've had some really great feedback on the app um, from some notable clients of ours, and um, it's been a really big success for our users just to give them a lot more um, nimble functionality. So with that, I can move into just talking really briefly about the pricing and the options that we offer with Design Manager. So we do have two um, software programs. We have a Design Manager program or a DM Cloud, and then we have a Design Manager Pro or a Pro Cloud um, option. So the DM Cloud option is for very small design firms, probably one to two people at most, um, really going for that solo solopreneur type of person um, that's really focused on custom design. Our pro software though is for growing design firms that have more purchasing volume, a need for accounting controls, like um, closing a month, closing a previous month so nobody else can post into it, things like that, um, that when you have multiple employees get really important really fast. And then of course, um, you can also run inventory and point of sale through our pro software. Um, so if you have any kind of showroom or a storefront or anything like that, um, that's really great. And we are doing an offer right now um, for everybody on this call um, where if you sign up for Design Manager, you can get 50% off until 2021. So with that, I think we can come to our question and answer portion um, of the program. That was great. Thank you, ladies. Thanks for taking us through that. Uh, you know, it's, um, I love the program. I love that it's um, you're able to customize it for your business and your business needs. And I'm really loving the app. Um, I'm loving that you can be out in the field and in a showroom somewhere and you can take a picture and you can automatically upload that information and you don't, you know, you don't have to do it later. I love that. And I love um, the time tracking too, because that's something that you know, tends to get pushed to the side, especially when you're out visiting with a client or shopping or whatever. So love that, love that. So awesome. Um, we have a few, we have a question that just came in here uh, from Terry Fiore. Um, <laughs> are you able to be using it simultaneously while someone else is working on the desktop version? If you yes. 
Yes, that's actually a really good question. Um, it's per user. So the same credentials that you use to log into your desktop software, you would use to log into the app, but it's not really monitored the same way. So um, like how you log into the desktop software, you wouldn't be able to do that, but with the app, you actually can. Okay, great. And let's see, we had a couple of other questions that came up earlier that I would love to run by you. Um, if, if someone is starting, uh, brand new, how long does it take to get up and running? So is it like um, comparing it to like a QuickBooks where you have to set up all of your accounts and all of that? What is that startup process like? Um, it does take probably a few weeks to get very familiar with the program, feel comfortable in the program and um, feel like you're, you know, a little bit more than a beginner in the program, I would say. Um, the process looks like starting out with importing your information. So starting out very first and foremost with just importing your clients and your vendors. Um, but we have a really, really good resource on YouTube. We have really great YouTube videos. We have a quick start playlist, it's called, that literally goes through step by step, you know, how to create a project, how to create an item, how to create a proposal, you know, and those are little short videos um, that you can get through really fast. But then we also have really in-depth videos and we have project management courses and then we have um, accounting a court, a, accounting a courses where we also have an advanced accounting courses as well but um so those go into a lot more detail they answer a lot more questions and you know you can get into that after you're you know familiar with the basics so we do have great tools um we actually have free support as well so we have a really great support team um casey actually helps out with our support team so she um is there and the beauty of it is that a lot of them have really good experience in the industry. Um, a lot of them have been there a long time. Casey actually has an interior design degree. So, you know, we, we have a, a good experience in the industry. We're very knowledgeable and very approachable. We are there and, and it's free to um, any paying members um, for the software. Oh, that's great. That's good to know. Okay, let's see. We have a couple of questions um, coming in here. Okay, we have an awesome. Does 50% off refer to every month for a certain number of months? Yes. So the rest of the the rest of um, 2020, basically. So January 1, we switch over to being full price. Okay, great. So if they sign up now, they get the they get basically six months at half price. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, a uh, question from Jeffrey. I am the owner of Harlow Lighting. So, uh, a question besides the geared toward interior designers, is the software geared towards other industries? That's actually a good question. We definitely don't have a majority of other trades involved, um, but that's not to say that we haven't had landscaped um, architects. We have architecture firms, we have kitchen designers. Um, and among others that I can't think of off the top of my head, but we've definitely extended it. Um, we even had some, some interesting um, HVAC companies use the software in the past. Um, I would say though, you know, 98% of our users are definitely interior design firms specifically, but um, if you can use it to build custom things, it, it is really good and it's all project oriented like Casey showed. Right, right, okay. Um, another question from Linda, is there a group um, slash tutor slash resource to help find a bookkeeper or accountant that merges with this program? That's actually a really good question too. Um, we do, we have a network of about 120 um, partners that we work with across the nation. Um, and most of them predominantly are bookkeepers. Uh, so what we have on our website is called a part is a partners page. So designmanager.com slash partners, and you can search by your state. So if you do the state drop down and you hit search, you should find whoever is available in your state um, that works with design manager. We also have a certification program uh, for those bookkeepers. So I would look for the DM certification logo next to them. Oh, that's great to know. Okay. Um, okay. Another question that had come in prior to this is what makes your program different from the others? Oh, that's really good too. Um, 
We, I would say first and foremost, our reputation, um, being around since 1984, we are deep into the industry. We have a lot of knowledge there. Uh, I think the breadth of our features also sets us apart. I think that we have um, very robust, very um, complex things like is it gets down very nitty gritty sometimes where people want to move around deposits on their proposals and things like that. All things that designers have had to do in the past, we have incorporated into our software. So we have those little things that might not be super sexy to talk about, you know, um, but it's actually very important to the way that interior designers work. Um, deposits and retainers specifically are a really strong point to the software. Um, and then I think lastly, Definitely our support, being free, being um, knowledgeable in the industry, I think is a huge advantage as well. Absolutely. And I, I can I can see that as, you know, as the each year goes on, you're making improvements, making adjustments. So it seems like you really have a lot of interaction with the interior designers and you're listening to the requests that are coming in. Yeah, we actually have a really cool new feature um, where you can, right from the software, you can hit suggest an idea or submit an idea, and it goes right to um, our product board so that our product manager can review those and, um, you know, adjust our roadmap accordingly. So that's been really exciting to roll out. That's very recent, and uh, clients have been loving that so far. Yeah, that's good. That's great. I mean, that's so important to be fle to be flexible. Um, another question that has come in, how difficult is it to merge from something like an Ivy or studio designer to your system? Um, studio designer is actually very similar in a way since they've been around um, almost as long as we have. So if you're from a learning perspective, it's very easy to switch over. Um, with either one, um, we can't take over the data. So we can't magically say, okay, that data is now in Design Manager. I really wish it was that simple. Um, it would make my job really easy, <laughs> but we don't, we don't have that ability because each one of these software packages is proprietary and um, it's just not possible. However, there are things that you can get around um, like importing. So we can import client lists, we can import vendor lists, we can import inventory items as well. Um, and then Casey's really good at helping clients onboard um, onto the software. So she can, she might have another couple of suggestions to do so, but entering your basic accounting functions and your balances and everything is also really easy. So it's almost as simple as like printing your balance sheet and then doing some journal entries. And it actually doesn't take as long as you might think. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, I can add to that. A lot of times clients will send us their, um, their client list and I can get that imported for them in like 30 minutes. So it's a very quick process. Sounds great. Okay, let's see. Um, I think we have, uh, does it, if anyone else has any questions, now's the time. Um, and just as we're, I see you have your screen up here. What is the best way for people to reach you if they are interested in, in signing up or have additional questions? Sure. Um, my email is just lindsay at designmanager.com. They can also reach out to sales at designmanager.com. Um, we have a really great website and we also have a really great blog too. Um, if you'd like to sign up for our blog, that is really, really, uh, I, I work on that a lot and we provide a lot of great content based around building your business and building your specifically your interior design business through social media. And, you know, we talk not only about marketing and like accounting functions, but also a lot of um, relevant topics. So COVID related things, um, you know, proofing your business for, you know, future, um, you know, economic uh, recessions and things like that. So we have a lot of helpful and helpful information and a lot of customer spotlights too, um, where, you know, they talk about how they use the software and, um, you know, different challenges that design managers helped with in the past, things like that. So Great. That's really great. You, you're really, you guys, it seems like you've thought of everything. <laughs> Very well-rounded. So great. I, you know what, this was amazing. This was, oh, let me, I don't want to miss anybody. Is there a Facebook group to share? Oh, we actually don't have a Facebook group. Um, uh, is actually, that old <laughs> yeah, well, we've actually polled our clients quite a few, few times, and um, it wasn't something that was super important to them. Um, I don't know if it's just our group of designers. We have about 
3,500 users, almost 3,600 now. Um, and we have about 1,500 design firms across the country. And we've never had, the, had a super great demand for it, I guess. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. Okay. Um, gosh, I want to thank you, ladies, so much, Lindsay and Casey, for being with us today. Um, this was this was a lot of information. I hope everybody was able to take a lot of notes. Um, we we are recording this, so if anyone would like to go back to it and review it, it will be living on our ASID New Jersey YouTube channel. Wonderful. Um, so yeah. So I just want to, again thank you so much, both of you, for for sharing this with us today, and um, and thanks for the discount. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, reach out to me personally. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Um, and I just want to say thank you to Terry and Terry and you as well, Sandy. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> everyone. Great. Okay. Thanks so much, ladies and everyone else. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, we will say we will see you next Tuesday at four o'clock. So thanks so much. And everybody have a great day. Thank you. Bye.